Wow, what's happening, folks? It's more official than a ref with a whistle, and you posted with me on Ready PG. I oh, don't have a broski, Cap Drosky. Oh, however, we are sitting here with the man on the waves, this flyer than a captain, Plug Chapman. What's happening, people? What's happening? Now, if you guys do not know, Plug Chapman is a comedian extraordinaire, folks. He's an entertainer, always on retainer, you feel me? So beware for the danger. Uh, do you have any shows coming up in the, for the month of June that you can think, remember of? Uh, June, boy, I'm, I'm busy, man. I got uh, the Laughing Skull. I'm going to be at the City Winery here in Atlanta. You can find me at the Laughing Skull on most weekends. Oh, okay. um, for like the best of Atlanta shows. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a monthly show that I do last Friday of the month out at Pinstripes in Stockbridge. Okay. And I got to go to Detroit, Ooh. Chicago, do a couple Ooh. shows. So yeah. Gangland. Uh, oh yeah, I take that thing with me though. <laughs> you know, no, I'm single, but I always got that bitch with hey, me. You I know what I mean? Thing. Uh, I have shows coming up in June. I also just made the best of Laughing Skull. Congratulations to you, man. Thank you. Thank you. That is uh, uh, an accomplishment here in Atlanta. Yes, yes, because I I hear a lot of people they like congratulations, Mister, making the best of. I've been doing comedy seven years, and I've never been on the best of. Yeah, man. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you just the rest of Atlanta. Ah, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, Shit, I was here for. Three years, I think. That's me too, three. I was like, you know, if you want something, ain't nothing short of divine intervention gonna stop you from getting it. Right. That's what I say. Like, if you wanna eat, if somebody was like, I don't think you should eat this. If you're hungry, then guess what? I'm gonna eat. I don't care what you say about it. Um, shows I got June 4th. Yeah, that's what it is. June 4th, I'm at the Best of Skull at the Atlanta City Winery. The 6th, I'm at the Skull again. Well, that's just at the Skull at 8 p.m. The 8th is the $1 comedy show. June 1st is also the $1 oh, comedy God. show. And I still got to come do that show, man. I ain't done it's that. really dope. You can come win and take all the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they vote for uh, whoever's the funniest comedian. They can put $1 in there, but you can put more than $1 in there if you want to. Uh, and the winner gets all the bread. If I don't win, I'm going to just have my girl in the parking lot with the two. Mm -hmm. Oh, you the winner. <laughs> Let me have that, you champ. Let me get an autograph from <laughs> Sign that check over. Uh, but I'm at the Skull again on the 9th for the best of, then the 16th, then the 17th as well. Oh, I'm sure we're going to be on the same one mm -hmm, at, some, mm -hmm. at some point. Plug it up, plug my it up. My calendar upstairs. But yeah. Um, how long have you been uh, doing stand-up comedy? Oh, man, I'm coming up into my ninth year. Mm -hmm. I started June the 23rd, 2010. Oh, he remember the day. Yeah, bro. You always do. I think mine was yeah, December 18th, 2016. Yeah. You always remember um, the day you embark on a journey. Mm -hmm. I remember the day I lost my virginity. That was a different kind of journey I embarked on. <laughs> I became a man in three yeah, days. Yeah, I remember. No, nah, I think it was less than three for me. <laughs> no, nah, I don't I was ran. I, I was an athlete. Now I did my thing. <laughs> I, didn't, first I, time. I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> but it was getting done. I stayed in there long enough uh, to figure it out. I was right, like, right, right. Well, right. yeah. So uh, that's a ten, about nine years. What got you started to do a stand up? Um, I always, man. I've always. Okay, so you know how like kids used to watch, like sneak and watch porn and stuff. <laughs> like yeah. I used to sneak and watch comedy. Like a lot of people used to tell me I went, that. I went to Robin Harris had shot that uh that Bay Bay's kid special. I was twelve years old. And um I went with my mom. See our parents used to meet up at each other's houses and like have fight parties, but they also used to do that and watch comedy specials when I was a kid. Okay. Like when Robin Harris dropped one of when Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, all my mom and dad and her friends, they would link up, popcorn, they drinking their beer, watching the thing. And the, the the house that I went to for the Robin Harris one, it was supposed to be some more kids. And it wasn't no more kids. And so I remember my dad or my mom was like, you gotta come down here and watch it with us. But don't repeat nothing that you hear. And I was just like, all right. And I remember watching and being like, this dude funny. I can't really relate because I'm a kid, but I still know humor. And I'm like, this is a job. like. He get paid for this? And they're like, yeah, he didn't make plenty of money. And I was just like, wow, that'd be a cool job. And it just so happened, man, I was funny. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when I came up and was younger, man, we just, I had a knack for saying that right thing to make the whole crowd, the whole class laugh, mm -hmm. make the whole theater laugh. 
Just that like right moment. I just say something in the movie and everybody would fall out. And then people, I would talk and people would be around me laughing. I was like, damn. And man. you just talking. Yeah, and my dad's the same way. My mom was the same way. And um, I wasn't that great of a student. Like, I was a pretty good athlete, but right. I didn't really prioritize school pretty much i had to do school to play by play ball and so it was just like all right i'm gonna do just enough because in my mind i was going to the pros right you played basketball or football i played basketball okay but i, I played basketball ran track i was uh not to brag i was most athletic <laughs> in my class right so i was like into that shit. i thought i was going legit to play basketball somewhere and so i ain't really send out no applications to go to college and all that. I was like, man, I'm gonna go tell jokes. And right. so my senior year in high school, I bought a how-to guide, a how to do stand-up comedy. And I'm so old, this was when AOL, and you had to have the dial-up stuff mm -hmm. on the computer. And I told my grandma, I said, grandma, I gotta order this ebook offline, can I borrow your, 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 your credit card? She was like, hell no. Right, now I ain't in my card. Right. <laughs> so I had to give her the money and whoop, whoop. never read the book. Cause I ended up getting a scholarship at the last minute. I didn't mm -hmm. get no basketball scholarship. I got a cross country scholarship, a track scholarship to Fort Valley. So I left the book alone, went to college. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, man, I would host stuff. Um, my freshman year, it was a big thing at Fort Valley to where all the dorms have a talent show. Mm -hmm. And it's a big thing, like alumni come back for these talent right. shows. And so it was, it was always important, like who your host is for your dorm. And I lived in an athletic dorm with mostly cues and you know, so it was like really important to who hosted ours. And we had the meeting. They normally would go to upper upper class or somebody known and they had the meeting and they I just remember them being like, Why don't you let Kareem host? He's funny as hell. And I was just like, I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> All right. So Jimmy Reed, the dorm parent, was like, I'm cool with it. If y'all cool with it. And so they talked me into doing it. And I didn't do no jokes. Right. I just hosted. Just related. And I joked about what was going on in the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And everybody had a t they had a modeling part. And I remember like I had to introduce everybody's outfits and it was all extravagant. I had on like some jeans or some shit. Right. So when they got finished, I was like, alright, come to the stage, Molly next, me with this uh goodwill t shirt. And this, you know what I'm talking about? Right. And right. right. they was dying. And so it's just the the, the feel of making people laugh. I'm like, wow. And so when I got out of college my senior year in college I got into the music real heavy but I got more interested on like the management side of it mm -hmm. not the rap part and so years went by I did that I, um, I used to manage some people that you all actually know um, I went to court with Iggy Azalea. We made. We used to manage her. Uh, a couple of producers I used to manage have made some shit that y'all songs that y'all sing. I ain't really get no checks from it, <laughs> but <laughs> what happened? I picked up and I moved to LA in 2010, mm -hmm. and the purpose was to get into the music business. And I got an interview at Interscope my first week out there, and mm -hmm. I'm like, "Yo, this is working out already." Right. Got hired. Went to the interview, I had on the suit. The girl interviewing me had on a 50 cent Get Rich or Die Trying sweater. That was uh, weird, but hey. Right, you're just, <laughs> she's like, yeah, rolling up a blunt. I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> so like, I'm overdressed. Very. So, I get hired. She's like, yo, you got the credentials because I had worked with Charlotte on the road. She was like, as far as I'm concerned, you hired. I just got to talk to the person you'll be working for mm -hmm. and let him know. Woo -de -woo. Never heard back from these people. I called them, followed up emails. I would get his assistant on the phone. She said, oh yeah, he'll be here today. We went here nothing. So I got depressed as shit, man, out there in LA. I left my daughter here, I'm talking about. And uh, I prayed one night. I ain't no religious, no <laughs> Jesus freak. No I think all that that Jesus stuff is a good story. But anyway, <laughs> I believe in God and, and you know, energies and the higher power. Right. And so I prayed and I said, man, I'm out here for something. It is what it is, I know not. What is it? <laughs> Tell me, give me, show me. Mm -hmm. And for the next couple of nights, bro, I kept waking up at the same fucking time. 
in the middle of the night and all I would think about was funny ass stories and just shit that was happening to me. Just, I'm in my bed, looking right. up at the sun, <laughs> cracking up. <laughs> just like, what? Just laughing. Mm -hmm. That third night, I start writing some of the stuff down. The studio I used to go to was in North Hollywood, off of Lancashire. I used to walk past the Ha Ha Cafe mm -hmm. to go to the studio. The owner was standing outside one day. I said, hey man, y'all do open mics? He said, every day, five o'clock. Ooh. I said, all right. Went on to the studio. And I kept, it's just, I kept waking up in the middle of the night. At the same, it would be around three, four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it was just humor on my mind. So I only did the open mic one day. Here I am. He said, I fucked it up. Just A lot of people, they say, I asked him how did that, well, I'm gonna ask you oh, that too. How did that first time go? I didn't, for one, I was terrified thinking, how am I finna talk for five minutes? Right. And this is gonna seem like forever. It didn't, it went really fast. And I remember I was drinking a couple of beers before and it was a veteran comic. And he say, it's your first time, man. <laughs> they can tell. And I say, yeah, yeah. He say, this is just talking. You'll be fine, man. I get off stage. He say, I walk over there and say, it wasn't your first time doing that. I said, yeah, it was. He said, you're going to be out here, bro. Just keep doing mm -hmm. I met a couple people like that. I'm like, was this your first time? They're like, yeah. I'm like, boy, you keep going. You're going to be all right. Keep going. Mandel was like that. First time I saw Mandel. Very oh first time God. I saw Mandel. Mandel is a goofball, mm -hmm. like a natural goof. I did not know. Mandel, Mandel would have been me if I would have started comedy at his age. Because I'm silly like that. I'm just, I'm older now. Did you know Mandel's a clean comic? Yeah. I did not know that until last week. Cause I I seen him perform a bunch of times and I it's, it hit me. I said, bro, I've never heard you curse before. And he was like, oh, I don't. Yeah. And he was like, I didn't know I was a clean comic till somebody else told me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, he, I was like, you know, I've been working on my clean comedy. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's where the money. Is. I had a conversation with Johanse about that though. He was like, clean comedy is the problem. The problem is clean content. Yeah. You can take. I can tell you the clean. When I did Heart of the City, I had to. Type up all my jokes and send, send them in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cause you can't be on TV talking about. It Cause you know right. certain brands they'll get sued. Like I'm glad I was able to get that Apple joke off, but it's the way that I do it. But anyway, mm -hmm. I did this joke. I got a joke about women's size of their breasts, and I wrote it and sent it to him. He said, "Man, this is the cleanest titty joke I've ever, <laughs> I've ever heard." He was like, "This is That's brilliant." He was like, "You can definitely do this." They ended up cutting it, but he was like, right. "You can definitely do this." But um, yeah, man. Um, That's where the money at. Churches, <laughs> yeah, church, yeah. Mm -hmm. and church is so easy. People think churches are hard. They're not. I mean, you can literally do church like a pep rally. Mm -hmm. For real, it's energy. They just yeah. want to relate to you. Yeah. I, somebody else told me, they, I was talking about like bombing on stage, and they said, you know, it's actually uncomfortable for the people in the crowd to watch somebody bomb too, because deep down they want you to be funny. Yeah. Like they want to have a good time. Yeah. So when you, I tell people, they can see that you know that this is not going well. Yeah. And when that happens, it just makes things awkward. So I remember the last time, I wasn't, I wasn't bombing, but I said like two jokes in like a minute, and nobody laughed at anything. I said, oh, so both of them jokes is trash. You acknowledge it. Yeah. And everybody started laughing. <laughs> like, I said, don't clap for that garbage. Be quiet. You know what I'm saying? And then just keep pushing. Uh, but where was that? Oh, that was the first place you went to. You said that place in LA. Um, and you already dropped one. I was like, who are some of your uh, favorite local comedians around here in the city? You ain't even loving with Plug Chapman all over the world. But I mean, like here in Atlanta. I, man, I'm. <laughs> I am. I guess it's like. I was just talking about this on the last one, man. I'm. I don't be realizing what I be doing. I just go do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't be like, man, you coming up. I'll be like, shit, I'm just, it's just another show. It's just, yeah. but answer your question. Um, man, I hate that question because it's so <laughs> it seems many. like you don't so leave many. somebody out Yeah, yeah you know? man. I'm going to say this. I have a respect for everybody that touches that stage mm -hmm. because to be able to, 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 have the urge and the nerve to get up in a room full of strangers and talk about your life or talk about things or whatever. It's, right. it, that takes, I have a, 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 a utmost respect for it, for everybody that does it. Certain people's styles of humor, I just happen to favor more. 
Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So everybody's funny to me. Everybody's mm-hmm. my favorite comedian because I learn from watching everybody, bro. For real, I like, watch you. people who get no laughs, mm-hmm. and I learn from them. I was telling somebody else. I said I've never had the thought to say that I'm funnier than somebody else. Mm-hmm. I said, now nah, I've had said I've had better sets on some nights and some people in comparison. Absolutely. And I was like, there are some people I have seen, and I personally do not think that are funny when I've seen them in a room. I've seen them go to another room and do those same exact jokes and just smack the whole crowd. And I was like, obviously, it don't matter what I think. Yeah, it's all, <laughs> dude. I read a podcast. I read a podcast. I listened, <laughs> I listened to a podcast from Jay Leno. Mm-hmm. My probably my first. Somebody sent it to me. It's probably my. I wasn't even six months in, and he said something on there, bro that changed the way I viewed it. It's like, he say, all right, every time you get on stage, people got three opinions of you. Mm-hmm. Somebody think you good. Somebody think you all right. Somebody think you fucking suck. All three of them are right. All right. <laughs> Everybody's right, right. Everybody right. Mm-hmm. It's their opinion. Yeah. And the older I get, I realize a lot of people will never own anything. Mm-hmm. They won't own a home. They'll never own cars. They won't own nothing but their opinion. So I get it to them. <laughs> Here you go. This is yours. You got it, bro. Mm-hmm. That's you. I've had people come up after shows. My wife thought you were funny, but I didn't think so. <laughs> Appreciate it, bro. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Is there any jokes I need to work on in particular? Well, uh, they don't. They're not ready for that question. Right, bro. I remember I did a show in. Uh, What's that in the Panhandle in Alabama? I never even been. Florida. Um, what was that? Ah! Pensacola. No, nah, it wasn't Pensacola. It was. Destin. One Destin. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I was somewhere. I keep wanting to say Fort Worth, but it wasn't. Fort Lauderdale? Like Texas. No. Um, Fort Myers. Nah, it's in South Florida. <laughs> anyway, I was. Absolutely, actually, it was Alabama. I was um, over by Mobile, like that. Oh, God. Anyway, wherever I was, I got booked to do a show, a corporate show. Mm-hmm. The age range was 18 to 80. Ooh. Somebody gonna be pissed off. Yeah, 100%. All right, right. So, <laughs> when he booked me, at the time, my assistant, and I love her, I love her to death. She she gets she, you have to remind her mm-hmm. sometimes right, and I told her go on that website and put up another video. I wanted a vid, PG video and I wanted a, a plug video. Right, <laughs> she forgot. So I assumed, and I forgot sometimes you. I assumed that he saw said video because I assumed said video had been posted. Mm-hmm. So when we had the discussion mm-hmm. on what the content was supposed to be, he said PG thirteen. Now, I don't know about y'all, but in this realm of day and age, PG-13, you might hear a shit, you might hear a bitch. You might hear ass. Right. You might see a titty. You might mm-hmm. hear, hey. I saw a titty. So I, I went <laughs> with that. The first, I did supposed to do 45 minutes. And I did them. <laughs> I did them. First, that first, probably six or seven, the bosses were enjoying it. Because it was clean, it was <laughs> right. But I'm looking around the room, and everybody's just and everybody else like another year of some bullshit entertainment. Mm-hmm. And then it got to a point where the bosses stopped really; they just began watching. And so I said, "You know what? I'm not about to take this L for <laughs> not this whole I L." I thought, boy, I start. <laughs> I'm already backed into the corner. Right. Boy, I came out, boy. You just start dropping like the hard. No, that was a that was another thing. I didn't go. I might have motherfucker twice, once right. or twice, but I didn't go. I'm not a dirty guy to right. where I'm just dick pussy. Fuck you, bitches. I didn't do that. Mm. I just did. I did. I did what I do though. You know what I mean? And so, long story short, bro. Afterwards, I'm standing outside because. The show is at, it's a Christmas party mm-hmm. for this, this gas company down in Alabama. So the show is in the hotel where they all stand. 
So everybody from the show was at this hotel. So after, I'm standing outside in the back smoking me a blunt. Mm -hmm. And a few people started coming out and noticing that it was me. So some people were like, bro, every year, even the human resources girl, she said, I've been in this company 10 years. She said, these Christmas parties suck. She was, Damn. She was, like, <laughs> she was like, thank you so much. She was like, they never gonna hire you again. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she, was like thank you. she was like, but thank you so much. And people inboxed me and was like, yo, I respect what I saw tonight. I, so I had a choice to make, but long story short, this dude comes up to me. I'm standing out there smoking, the human resource lady there. All these is big coworkers. Mm -hmm. He come up, he say, hey, you asshole. My grandmother was there. And you disrespected, how do you feel? He start, I say, hold on. I say, dude, don't walk up on me, man. I say, your opinion, you can have that. But I say, man, don't let your coworkers see your ass get beat out here by a comedian. I say, bro, I say, bro, cause you gotta go to work with these people Monday. I will be in Atlanta. You I was like, you don't want that smoke. <laughs> and they grabbed him. I say, boy, y'all better buy. I say, man, I looked, I said, but I will knock your ass out. Mm -hmm. Right out here. In front of all your people. Go wake up my daughter. Cause she came and went with me. Mm -hmm. She was in the room. I said, I go wake up my daughter and be in Atlanta. And you gonna be up. Somebody gonna be you waking your ass up on the side of the curb. Yeah, and I told him, I said, man, I respect your opinion, but you're walking into my space. Mm -hmm. So I don't care nothing about you and your grandma. Uh what's your method for developing some of your material? Like I know some people say they write, some people draw from life, some people just don't write. I mean people say they don't write all the time. I don't write as much as got to be. She fine. <laughs> Y'all see my dog? Mm-hmm. So uh, my, when my mom passed, I inherited a dog. Yeah, she's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. This is Madison, everybody. She just got her nails did. I need to get her Instagram account. All right, mm -hmm. baby, you gotta get down for a second, baby. Um, When it comes to writing, I don't force it, mm -hmm. right? So what I'll do is something might happen that I'll make a note of that I want to talk about, but I pull from observations of life, Yeah, mostly, Same and, and things that happen just like my daughter and you know I was just joking about the whatever and um mm -hmm. sometimes I'll just take an idea and try to write from stage mm -hmm. that I ain't got that good yet but uh yeah good advice my mom dudes gave me she was hilarious she was like why don't you write something that didn't happen and that's what you mean and then she was because I know every, everything I write actually happened to me or I've seen it happen and she was like the movie Friday and I was like right she was like Craig Ice Cube wrote Friday. She was like, do you think it happened exactly the way he wrote it? And I was like, nah. She was like, so you don't have to write everything that's necessarily true, but make it sound believable. Yeah, it's, that's what I tell people. Like, it's three forms of writing. You got three forms of joke writing. You got the exaggerating form. Mm -hmm. You got when people use the rule of three. Then you got what, what we call just, you know, the left turn. You know, you don't see something coming. Right. But you can take any true story and exaggerate the shit mm -hmm. for joke purposes. But it's based in truth, right. so you won't feel like you're lying because it's based in the truth. So I do a lot of that shit, a lot. He's a whole lot. I've been trying to, but like, and, and that's what happens when I write something that's quote not true. It feels like I'm forcing it. When I talk, I got a joke about parents and about how expensive my daughter is to take her out to eat. And the joke came from she ordered some oxtails one day that was like twenty one bucks. But in the joke, the oxtails are thirty five dollars, thirty eight dollars, thirty nine dollars. Right. It's it got to be whatever. Be, right. It, they can be 50. They can be whatever. Because it was based in the truth. The truth. But it was just slightly exaggerated. Right. For a comedic purpose. I like that. Right. Um, what was your most memorable bomb? <laughs> like the one you close your eyes and you still smell um, a little bit. <laughs> I got two. One. <laughs> one. Um, Everybody bombs, by the way. What? Everybody bombs. Man. <laughs> I go places too, bomb. <laughs> it's some show. I'll be like, "What if we go get this bomb?" Right? I'll yeah. say it too. Let me go ahead and get this nose dive right, right quick. Go ahead, in, go ahead and be him. Feel humble again. Mm -hmm. um, first one was in L.A. I had met a chick mm. at a show, mm. and I should have smashed that night. But me being all nice guy, and I had a girlfriend at the time too. Mm. But uh. I invited her to another, well, we, we, I invited her to another show a buddy of mine was doing. I wasn't on the show. Mm -hmm. I get there. She goes to tell the host, 
my friend funny. You should let him oh. perform. He a comedian. Oh, and he's like, you a comedian? Yeah, this time. So now I got this pressure. Like, <laughs> I can't be like, man, no, I'm straight. Right. Because she didn't went up and. I should have. Oh. It was a room in Inglewood, California. Boy, I got up there and, boy, I bombed so bad. She went home with Ah! Uh, she went uh, home with the host. Ah! Uh, That's damn. how bad I am. Second one. Here in Atlanta, I was over on uh, right there by 529, where that I Lounge mm -hmm. is. Buddy of mine did a rap show. Comedy and rap could mix if done right. correctly. They have to be done correctly. So I told him before the show started, I said, man, put me up before you put the rappers up. Or just let me host the show, mm -hmm. and I'll just sprinkle some jokes in. Right. He was like, nah, man, my buddy gonna host, man. You funny, man. I can put you up well, but you be all right. Pushed me up after probably about the third <laughs> rap. <laughs> and the raps were good. The one guy, it's no seats. Mm -hmm. The only seats is like, I'm standing on this little stage. It's probably about this high. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'm actually up, but it's no seats. Like people are standing. Cause it's a rap shit. Right. People standing. The only seats is like this little VIP on the wall toward the back. Right. So they are already standing there with me, Bruh, Every time I would do a joke, this one dude would go, boom, <laughs> and you just hear it throughout everywhere. And when I tell you, I want to. You, you watch Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. You remember when Theon? They was in, uh, in season one, the season two, when he took over Winterfell, when they was playing that horn. Mm -hmm. and he was like, "Kill that horn, man!" <laughs> that's, that's how. Well, stop get that mother. That's how I was like. <laughs> or, or oh, he would go. If he didn't do, he didn't do that. He would go, boom. Like he just make <laughs> some noise. Uh, that shit sucked. You know Marlon, don't you? Marlon Ballard? The longest damn 10 minutes. Yeah. Marlon, I remember I was at this show once and I... Y'all look alike. Yeah, shit. You're the hundredth person, bruh. <laughs> we were both at Cats before this. We were both at Cats uh, this Tuesday. And I just got off stage and I walked up and I dat Marlon and there was like three other comedians. One of them was Poncho. So funny. Poncho was like, yo, that's your brother, nigga? Yeah. And I was like, nah, was, nah. Y'all, somebody mom was cheating because y'all niggas look exactly the same. <laughs> But Marlon, I remember I was at a show and I was kind of bombing and like two or three jokes were not hitting. And I was like waiting for the laughs and nobody laughed. And I just, I knew it was Marlon because I could hear him all the way in the back. He just goes, oh, because I go out here as hard goes and everybody just started laughing. And he's done that like three more times. And every time I'm at a show, even if it's funny and everyone's laughing, I'll just wait. It'll be silent. I'll just hear him go, oh, 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 oh. That is, man. Fuck Marlon. Uh, yeah, fuck you, Marlon. Uh, yeah, he got on my ass about that jacket I wore <laughs> from on Heart of the City for about two years, bro. Uh, we down to about the last five of the show, though. Um, let me ask you this. This is a question I usually forget to ask people. What's something that you learned from doing stand-up that you wish somebody would have told you? Hmm, that's a good question. Something that I've learned from stand-up that I wish... Like, uh, some good advice I got was from, like, Johansa. He was like, it don't really matter what anybody thinks about your comedy as long as you believe it. Remember that Jay Leno stuff? That dream? Really? Yeah, that, after hearing that, bro, like, some people, man, I've had, and it was, you You said something really interesting earlier. You was just like, I've never said I was funnier than anybody. I've mm -hmm. said I've had better sets. I've had better sets than some real working comedy. I was on a show with uh, Rob Stapleton one night out of L.A., and... Mm -hmm. He was trying. He was having a good set. But I got up like two people at them. Smack. Yeah. I'm talking about. So it doesn't matter. And that's another thing I tell people too. I was like, it shouldn't matter who else is in the room when you came to do your best. You feel me? I was like, so if I've, there have been plenty of times I've been in a room and like Chris Tucker has walked in or something like that. And everybody's like, oh, I got to do good now. I see he should have did good before he even walked in the door. Right. There's times, uh, this happened twice. I was on stage and Lou Mel walked in. And I seen her walk. First time she walked in, I was on stage. And like, I was still doing my regular degular. Everybody was laughing and shit. And I got off stage and she was like, that was funny. She's like, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people see like celebrities walk in and then they try to like cater to them and stuff. She's like, don't do that. She's like, just be who you are. And 
uh, I'll say this, I feel like a lot of comedians don't tell other comedians about shows and shit. They're like, well, I don't want all these people coming here, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, if you feel like you're only doing good because somebody else isn't there, then you're not good enough. Right. So I would say, it don't matter who's at the show. It don't matter if you're not getting booked or not. Tyler Chronicles told me, whenever you do a stand-up show, no matter if there's three people there or if it's 3,300, 3, do your best set every single time because you never know who's going to be in the crowd. Could be a writer somewhere. Could be a producer. Yeah. So just do your best and fuck the rest. That's all we tell people. I was like, I like that. Right. Because, you know, if you... It ain't even really the same analogy. I said, if you a porn I star... Said, I should get that from you. Because sometimes I might see three people and be like, I'm going to work on some jokes. <laughs> I'm like, okay, ain't nobody really here. Nah, like, I, I actually heard somebody do that once. Like, I walked in once and I was like, oh, shit, Pierre's here. And I went up and said, what that mean? And he was like, well, I mean, I was just going to try out some jokes tonight. And I was like, it don't matter if I'm here, nigga. Try out some jokes if you want to. I was like, you know, me, I don't get tired of doing my same, like, good joke I got, but I like doing comedy because it forces you to do things outside of your comfort zone. What I'm learning now, where I am, I'm seeing my my weaknesses. I've kind of exposed them to myself, which, it, which was mostly not edited. It was like, for 10 years, for 9 years, mm-hmm. I have legit been doing, and I got a lot of jokes. So I kind of was able to kind of hide it for right. a while because I got a lot of material. But now I'm looking at the material mm-hmm. like can't use it. Well, it's now what? Because some of it I got jokes that's not even relevant anymore, mm-hmm. and so it's forcing me to take the stuff that I got now and actually go back and listen to it mm-hmm. and try to rewrite it or rework it. I spent this whole week just rewriting setups. I've been doing that the last Just trying them a different way. D. Just, Bird told me about doing that. And I was like, you know what? You bought right. Yeah. Because it works out. And some dude sent me a video link. Uh, he was like, yo, I just saw your set. It was hilarious. Some dude on Instagram, he sent me a picture of it. I don't even remember doing that set. It was like from two years ago. And I watched it. And when I was watching, I was like, yo, that shit's actually fucking hilarious. I don't even remember saying it. And then uh, I actually took the video down because it has like my getting pulled over bit in there. It was like the blueprint when I first started mm-hmm. telling that joke. Don't even say it the same way I was used to now. Mm-hmm. But I know somebody heard that. They're going to be like, ooh, I can take that. So I took that whole video down, but it's, it's, it is dope. I have like like this right here. I have books like this at the house full of jokes and shit. I've never even said it before. Man, man you so, know that, boy. I do, I do, and I don't use start, none of it. I need to start doing that. Like what I'll do is the other day, I've noticed recently I'm bad at picking lines. Like I'll see, I'll be in a Walmart. I'm a kid, I just heard ice cream truck. I was just like, yeah, it's probably gonna go down. And I'll see a line and be like, oh, that's short. And get in it. Next thing you know, everybody in the store gone. Mm-hmm. And I'm still in this line. <laughs> and so like, I'm like, it's something funny about that. It's something so funny now, about it. How can I make it relatable? So I just kept thinking about it. I write stuff about it. Like, I write little ideas. What is funny about this? What else? So then I'm thinking about what types of lines are there? And I say, oh, shit. I'm bad at picking lines. That's the reason why I don't do cocaine. You know what I mean? Right. So that, I'm like, ah, it's just a jack. Right, it's a joke. People like cocaine jokes. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And so that kind of like, you know, we talked about it already, but that's kind of how I do my writing process. Like, I'll see something and then be like, I'm going to come home and just jot down with everything that makes me laugh about it. Like, I got a joke about running over here in bad neighborhoods. So I'll like, what is all funny? What could happen when you run in a bad neighborhood? You can get chased by a dog, chased by a police, <laughs> you can get shot by a straight bullet. You can. All of this stuff. So then I'm gonna look at it and go, 